Okay, after you have your uh, timing cover installed, you may want to put on your little timing indicator. It's got the little numbers on here to tell you uh, where your timing is at, which is um, degrees before top dead center or after. And we're going to just pop off these two guys here, and we're going to put this guy on like that. And then after we put our balancer on, we'll be able to set our timing. All right, there's our uh, little timing indicator mounted on. Our timing cover bolts we uh you don't need this uh this little red pointer on here but you know if you don't have a timing light that adjusts and you just have a straight uh, flashing timing light then um, it'll help i've got this one set at eight degrees before top dead center uh factory i know is six degrees most of the time on all these v8s and stuff but setting timing and all that fun stuff the final tune up and tuning is um is an art and a science and we'll talk about that more later but just for general purposes we're going to have this set at eight so it's not quite you know factory timing we're going to bump the timing up a little bit and it can be quite a bit advanced but you need to run you know premium unleaded or premium gas in it higher octane gas and there's a lot of factors involved so just for general purposes um, we're just going to set this at eight for now and leave it when you rebuild an engine you should always get a new uh, Harmonic, harmonic balancer um, just like a fuel pump or water pump or anything else you just want to avoid problems down the road um, a lot of times what happens is this rubber seal in between the outer ring and the inner hub on older balancers these will actually crack and what happens is this outer ring can actually spin and when you have a spun balancer you'll feel the engine shake um, it's hard to set the timing because these timing marks on the outside will be off and it's just a good idea to you know spend a hundred bucks or whatever it is for a new balancer. I know everybody's on a budget but I do highly recommend getting uh, a balancer installing tool like this. Uh, makes life so much easier and if you're only doing one engine or you know whatever if you're on a really tight budget you can usually borrow one or rent one from a local parts store AutoZone or Craig and whatever. Uh, you can see if they have them uh, to use. They just make life a lot easier. Alright, we'd already put some engine oil on the inside lip of this front seal. Um, we also want to put oil around the inside and the outside of the hub here before we put it on. We're just going to line up the keyway and get it started. Now once you have your balancer in place, you can grab your installing tool, make sure you have the correct threads. Uh, you can put a little bit of anti-seize on there. It uh, helps out quite a bit. And we'll just get that started. And same thing, you know, back thread it until you feel it click. And then go forward. You really, really do not want to cross thread or strip out the threads inside that crank. Um, I don't even want to do a video about that. Okay, this is kind of hard to show with one hand. But as you can see, we've got a 916 wrench holding the end of our installing tool. Then we've got a large adjustable wrench crescent wrench that we're going to use to turn the nut which is actually going to move this forward and bottom that out onto the crank. Okay, as long as you've got some oil on the inside of there uh, you should have some anti-seize on these threads here. Uh, this should turn fairly easy with a large adjustable wrench and then when it gets to the bottom it stops it bottoms out and starts turning the crank and the hub then you know it should be on all the way. And of course your timing mark should be lined up at zero.